you know, I mean, uh, how many people are going to say it's been an incredible year, but I'll tell you, the guy I've got next had an incredible year. <laughs> I mean, BT Global's just had a spectacular, well, several years, but last year I'm looking at their results, looking at the stocks they recommended at the World Outlook Conference. Paul Beatty's here, co-founder of BT Global. Paul, this is one of the worst possible things because now it's people saying, yeah, now what? Because, I mean, I'm looking at your fund this year, you're up uh, 66%. Uh, for the year, 69 point, uh, or 65.9 rather. But I looked at the, uh, the recommendations that you had for us. They did even better when you look at the group of six. You know, it, it's, uh, <laughs> do you sit there going, I think it's time to retire from the business because it's not going to get better than that? Yeah, the last year was spectacular. I remember uh, at your conference, remember though, they, uh, right after the conference, uh, things, uh, yes, of things course. did dip a little bit into March. And, and, uh, but yeah, from March till, till now, it's, uh, it's been a very good run. It's not uh, over yet though. Don't worry. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, when you look to 2021, uh, you know, a lot of the uncertainty geopolitically, or at least, you know, politically in the States is out of the way. You know, it is a Biden presidency, Democrats, uh, whatever they end up getting passed through the House and the Senate in terms of stimulus, it's going to be a big number, you know, so we know that kind of stuff. Uh, what are you looking for? Does any of that stuff influence as you go forward or, is, or that's now in the rear view? Now you just keep doing what you're doing. Well, I, I think you're right. I mean, you, you've got to look at what's going on in the U.S. And, um, and, and Biden coming in is, uh, is no small thing. I, I don't, I'm not sure you want to own, you know, uh, the S&P uh, as much as you want to own certain sectors. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Biden's made it very clear uh, what he's, pro what he's against and uh, U.S. cannabis, all those names we recommended last year, uh, I wouldn't sell a single share. <laughs> mm -hmm. They all had a terrific year, some of them up three, four hundred percent, but uh, so what? Uh, they're, they're, they're very clear. Uh, just yesterday, the, the Senate, uh, three big Democrats in the Senate said they want to push legislation the first half of this year. They want to legalize marijuana in the Senate. So. It's going to be a, it's going to be terrific, uh, terrific well, for that sector. Well, why don't I just uh, let it to you? You tell us what you think going. I know you got a couple of slides to share with us. Why don't you go ahead with that? Well, yeah, that's what I'd like to just reiterate. I think we called it, uh, you know, the U.S. cannabis names as the uh, uh, investment opportunity of a generation, of a lifetime. Uh, I stand by that today. I mean, yeah, the stocks have all gone up, but. We're not in this for a one-year wonder. So now uh, the Senate has switched to uh, to the Democrats. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's very clear they want to legalize. In, they want to legislate and legalize uh, cannabis. So what does that mean? Well, it means uh, they're going to be able to list uh, these stocks. They're all listed in Canada. They're going to be able to list uh, down in the U.S. at some point this year. We think there's as much as $100 billion of investment demand uh, just coming out of institutions, you know, pension funds, uh, banks, hedge funds in the states. Uh, and if you add up the valuation of all of the uh, uh, largest, the, the entire industry in the US, you add up the market cap, you only get to 40 billion. So you've got 100 billion in demand, 40 billion in supply. Every one of the large companies has gone public, so there's nobody else to, to sort of arrive and, and, and take away market gap. You're gonna have more buyers and sellers, I promise you, and uh, <laughs> these stocks are gonna do very well. So uh, hold on to them. And, uh, and which leads to our number one pick, we may as well tell you right now, a, a new uh, ETF just came out in the States. They call it MSOS, is the symbol. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, they've made life very simple for, uh, for, your, for your clients, Michael. You just buy that. It's very well constructed, put together 10% each of the five biggest players, a bunch of the mid-sized players, and then a whole slew of high-quality, smaller players. They're all going to get bought uh, over the next year or two. And so this uh, MSOS, I, uh, I think everybody will be well served to buy a few shares of that. That's our top pick. Okay, uh, well, that's terrific. That's a good way, a good way to start. Actually, I've got a question about it. What exactly are they, though? What, what are they uh, following there? Is so they, well, it's just a, uh, you know, it's, it's an ETF listed on the, uh, uh, on the New York Stock Exchange that, that owns um, uh, 
the largest uh, cannabis players in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that's half the index. You know, there's well, there's six of them, so ten percent each. So that's sixty percent of the uh, of the index. So you get all the big boys, and then uh, and then it goes down from there. But they, uh, I think it's very well constructed actually. They uh, they, they own a whole slew of companies. Another say, I'd say another twenty companies. Uh, they're fully invested all the time, and uh, the space is going up. I think, uh, in fact, this thing's already gone from from nothing to six hundred million dollars in the size of the ETF. We expect it'll be probably a billion dollars by the end of February. And uh, you know, if they legalize uh, this or legislate this uh, positively, I mean, as I said, hundred billion in demand. Uh, this thing could go to ten billion. So it's kind of self fulfilling because. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're going to be a big buyer of, uh, of the smaller cap stocks in particular. So. Well, I'll let you go with it. Tell us what else. Tell us what's on your mind. Tell us what BP, BT Global's thinking about. Well, uh, Mr. Biden, again, uh, just just uh, yesterday came out with uh, some very positive comments on uh, on nuclear, right? Uh, this is, uh, the you know, the, the, the Democrats are going to uh, adopt, uh, you know, nuclear energy as part of their uh, long-term plan. So what does that mean? Well, you know, there aren't that many uranium plays in the world. And uh, if America stops shutting down nukes and, in fact, you know, signing long term contracts and giving them long term permits to open up that industry, well, the 10 or 15 stocks that, that provide uranium to the, uh, to the utilities uh, are going to have a good run. And uh, we're quite excited about it. I mean, we, we find it quite dramatic, really. I mean, uh, just out of the blue. Well, to us, it was out of the blue, but it basically endorsing uh, the uranium industry. Uh, if you add up all of the uranium companies in the world, you don't get to 10 billion bucks. So where are they going to get the uranium from? So buy, uh, you know, buy the big ones, buy Cameco, buy, uh, buy the whatever you like, buy the ETF. We're, uh, anyway, we're very bullish on it. So again, Biden, you know, he's, he's coming in. He's going to come up with his plan and he's telegraphed it and i think the stock market is reacting but it has you know these things you, you can't react overnight and, and it's not going to happen overnight it's going to happen over over uh, uh, let's call it this year uh and 2021 is going to be a terrific year for uranium stocks <laughs> it's, it's going to happen uh so we've got a lot of that um uh, I, I must say that you know the i think canada is going to have a good year i mean you know when we launched our fund 15 years ago, Canada massively outperformed the U.S. And uh, for the first six years, over the last 10 years, though, Canada's well underperformed. I mean, we just don't have the tech sector and whatnot. And uh, and I think that's all coming back. So so basically, for the last nine years, uh, we've been doing OK, um, but nothing spectacular. And of course, energy has been tough. Um, but I, I, I really get the, the sense that uh, uh, the hard assets are going to have a, a bit of a run and not just a, for a year or two, but maybe for the next uh, three, four five years. So uh, I fully expect Canada, uh, the Canadian market, all sorts of companies, subsectors within the Canadian market to, uh, to have a very, very good run. So, I mean, let's talk about uh, what's the other big theme. You know, everybody knows Tesla. I, I can't imagine owning Tesla stock at these levels, but uh, I'm probably wrong. It's probably going higher. But uh, they've made it clear that uh, the world's going, uh, you know, electric vehicles. If, if you believe in electric vehicles, which is not a stretch, if you believe that, uh, you know, the infrastructure has to be built to, uh, to, uh, to provide electricity to charge all these uh, cars as they're, as they're moving around Europe, North America, but in Asia as well, well, you need a few things. And for sure, you need a ton of copper. Where are you going to get the copper? Everybody can do the math. Nobody wants to clearly lay it out for you, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll point out that the math doesn't work. There's not enough copper available. So if you want to build the infrastructure across Europe to build a bunch of uh, uh, battery stations to charge your Tesla and everything else, if you want to build the cars themselves, it needs more copper. Uh, so where's it going to come from? Well, again, the industry only has a few players, not enough players. And uh, I just think it's, it's just going to be a fabulous run in, uh, in all these copper names. So me, you know, we love uh, just for one, the largest player in Canada, 
this company is still cheap as can be. Uh, I fully expect this stock to have another terrific year and then another terrific year after that. And are you really taking a lot of risk? I'm not so sure. I mean, this thing trades at uh, five, six times cash flow. Um, it's just it's just too cheap. I mean, you can pick any. Anyway, it doesn't matter. HUD Bay is another terrific play and all this stuff. So buy copper stocks. Um, I could go on and on, but precious metals, don't give up on precious metals. All the money printing going on. Do you see how much money uh, your prime minister is uh, printing this year, Michael? I don't know if you read the numbers, but it's yeah. off the charts. So same in the US, same in Europe, all this money printing, come on, how could you not own a few gold stocks uh, and a few silver stocks? Uh, so do you, that, that whole, yeah. I, a couple things, I'll, I'll get you, reiterate the copper stocks, but do, um, I think you have some slides that you have some of this stuff on too that might help us if you want to uh, show us those. Yeah, I, I sort of, those are the themes, uh, I was going to I was going to suggest on page uh, on page eight of our presentation. These are the kind of the the, the subsectors that we're very yeah. interested in. Talked a little about the well, cannabis industry, uh, base metals, all the uh, the uh, e metals. They're calling them. It's a little bit more esoteric, but lithium, graphite, all of this stuff is it's going to have a, a terrific future. Uh, we could jump into uh, another subsector: uh, the esports business. I don't, I don't know if you been following the economics of this electronic sports, right? So yeah, please do the 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 economics uh, are, are simply fabulous, right? So people watching imagine, you know, you hosting uh, a competition uh, video games and um, uh, you, you get the teams, you get the, you put it all together in, a, in an arena you know, 20,000 people watching, but then you uh, broadcast to the world and you have, you know, 50 million people tuning in and actually paying to watch the event. So you have, uh, you know, uh, 10 teams uh, that you have to pay to show up and then you have, you know, 100 million viewers. <laughs> and what's the cost of providing the, the, the game? I don't know. It's, I think it's all been written. It's just a, it's a video game that everybody's already... Uh, played a thousand times before. So I don't know, the economics are simply fabulous. Now, a number of these companies are coming public uh, uh, in Canada uh, this year. We're going to participate in a few of them. And uh, anyway, I think that whole sport, that whole uh, sector is going to be a, a great new growth area. And Canada is going to be in the center of it all. So uh, eSports. Um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, uh, alternative health care as well. The, the whole idea of telemedicine, You just can't avoid this, right? Our governments cannot afford uh, the healthcare costs. So anything that's driving down healthcare costs and yet providing services, what is it? Ten thousand Americans uh, turn sixty-five every day. This this trend is, is absolutely massive. And um, uh, last year we recommended uh, uh, this uh, PTQ. I think one of your other uh, uh, guests did last year as well. PTQ. So it got a lot of a uh, lot of airtime. It was a great company last year. It's an even better company this year. So this is a, this is another sort of, I think, a, kind of a, like a must-own stock because uh, the downside is marginal. And what's the upside? Well, so PTQ is the symbol that uh, we, we highlighted on, uh, on page nine. Uh, I'll tell you what, what's exciting is just last week, uh, these guys providing healthcare services to the, uh, to the American populace. Uh, they've been public here in Canada. They said, well, business is so good. We need, we do need more growth capital. We've decided to go list it on NASDAQ. Now, if you're a company that trades in Canada and you're fully focused on the U.S. market and you trade it seven to eight times EBITDA cash flow and all your competition in the U.S. trades at 11, 12, 13, 15 times cash flow and you go list on NASDAQ, your stock is going up. So um, I, I'm telling people don't sell a single share of uh, PTQ. Uh, in fact, why don't you buy a few more? And uh, and because uh, this thing is it's got like a, they telegraph it. They tell you we're going on that NASDAQ. Of course, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to take a couple of months. Uh, but but so what? And uh, the trend is there. Uh, the company's doing great. And in, you know, trading at seven times EBITDA is just far too low. So that's our uh, second pick. Mike, don't forget about that one. 
Uh, what else can I tell you? We've got another uh, uh, great winner for us uh, last year, and and I've spent hundreds of hours studying this company, but uh, I think you'll like this one. The um, uh, you know the whole fitness trend, the whole uh, online uh, opportunities. You, you've you've all heard of Peloton, right? Uh, you know, at home fitness. The thing about Peloton is they focus on uh, the rich, right? The top 1% that can afford anything. And uh, so Peloton caters to these folks and it's been tremendously successful, right? So you buy your equipment, you order it online, they show it shows up at your house, you do your workout at home, and then you pay, uh, these guys charge $100 a month <laughs> to, to go online and, and look at uh, uh, some cute athlete uh, lead you through uh, you know, some exercise program. That's great. So if you want to pay 100 bucks a month or 70 bucks a month and you want to buy a $4,000 bike, go with Peloton. Peloton's gone from nothing to a $45 billion market cap, okay? So good for them. How about you take a look at Nautilus? NLS is the symbol. I've got a uh, little highlighted uh, on our uh, uh, page 10 of our slide deck, but just as a summary, they do exactly what uh, Peloton does. Thing is, they have a market cap of 750, not 45 billion, 750 million. They have three um, brand names, Nautilus, which is, I think, pretty well known. Also, Schwinn, of Schwinn Bikes, and Bowflex. They own Bowflex as well. Management changed a couple of years ago. The company was all uh, was close to bankruptcy. Stock went all the way down to $2. Uh, we were lucky enough to buy some at two and five and seven. Stock's now at what, $23, $25. But the gate, the, 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 so now it's 750 market cap after a terrific run, but is it over? I'm not so sure. They are gonna charge you for the exact same service, right? An online service, uh, $15 a month. How many customers can they get? Well, they're not telling us. Uh, how many customers do they have now? How many do they expect to get? Uh, they're not telling us. But I suspect one day soon they will tell us. They'll let us know. And just like Netflix, you know, 10, 15 bucks a month, you can uh, you can get a lot of subscribers. I can tell you, we tried to buy their equipment. Right? We tried to buy a bike. We tried to buy a treadmill. Here in Canada, you can't even get it. Everything's selling off the charts. Uh, you know, selling selling off the shelves. And and uh, and by the way, you don't think they're an innovative company? You should see the amount of uh, new products this company's. Uh, innovated in the last 12 months. It's like every month they've got something new coming out. So where's the stock going from here? I don't know, but there's a long way between 750 million and uh, 45 billion, and they're going after a much bigger market. So uh, I think uh, I think it's just terrific. Uh, so I, I figured uh, I'd let you, I'd let you all in on that one as our third pick because I, I frankly I don't see much downside. And um, a year from now. Michael, why don't we talk about the, what, what was the, uh, how Nautilus do? And uh, I'm prepared to bet it's going to be higher than it is today. So uh, that's sort of the summary of what we're doing. Uh, I think it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a little bit volatile, probably more volatile than last year. But frankly, last year had some volatility early in the year and then had a spectacular run. So uh, why would it be any different? You know, volatility remains, but uh, opportunities everywhere. Let me just add to the, the, the Nautilus story, the true story. I tried to get a, a Bowflex bike, as you say, owned by <laughs> Nautilus, uh, sort of in November. And the first promised delivery date was about 10 weeks. And that was after considerable begging. <laughs> you know, and, and I said, should I send you a picture of myself? Because you'll, you'll know I really need to get on this thing. But that didn't seem to do it. No, but just to Allah, what you're saying, uh, the popularity, uh, and it's fascinating. It's been a fascinating growth industry. You know, a year ago, if you had asked me uh, to sort of anticipate what Peloton would do, I never would have gone to the degree that it's gone. You know, it's, been, it's obviously home fitness is one of these big beneficiaries of the, the lockdown, but the also change in psychology then, I think it's part of our environment. So that's a, it's a fascinating story there. So if, if I had told you, we talked about Peloton, and then I, and then I would describe to you a company uh, uh, like Nautilus, and just hypothetically say, well, let's let's just pretend uh, we'll, we'll have a competitor to uh, Peloton that's got like 30 years of history, has three brand names, 
everything's selling off the shelf and uh, and they have an online platform uh, and then you know, we talk about it i'm sure you would say fine i'll pay five billion for that mm-hmm. uh or some some healthy number and to think that uh, you can get it for less than a billion now i i find it extraordinary i think what i think one of the things is that people look at the stock having done so well they just they just think okay i missed it of course it's a natural but i don't think we've I, I, the math just doesn't work how do you miss it you think they can't order more bikes they design these things right you, what mm-hmm. peloton can get bikes and they can i don't know they've been in business a long time anyway we like management we think they're being very coy with their sort of online part of the business but we know from netflix uh, you know if you've got customers paying let's call it ten dollars a month if you've got tens of thousands that's nice but what happens if you have hundreds of thousands What's it worth? It's recurring. It's a whole new business for these guys, and I, I, I just think, I think it's got a great future. And frankly, who's going to knock them? You know, who's going to knock them off their 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 second position mm-hmm. in America? That's not that's not obvious to anybody. So, you think there's not room for two out of home fitness companies? Why not twenty? Right. So, Let me ask you a quick question simple. about BT Global. Just a you know. Uh, you guys can go both long and short. I've talked about you a lot and your track record has been exceptional. You know, and as I say, uh, how do you beat last year? How many stocks would you own? Uh, I mean, obviously it's not like an individual investor. You've got a lot more capital to invest, but I'm just interested, how many stocks do you sort of think is your maximum or that kind of thing? So, so we're, we're fully invested now. Uh, so we're at 30 stocks long, not all the same weighting. Of course, we've got you know, 12 to 15 stocks with a heavy, like, mm-hmm. large weighting. But then we've got maybe 30 positions on the long side and 15 on the short. Um, it's been very tough to short stocks. Uh, and well, been- yeah, in the last couple of weeks, I, I, I don't think that, I was wondering if ever, anyone's ever gonna short again after the last couple of weeks, but yeah. Wow. But I think that's one of the strengths of your, your fund, by the way. I, I've always loved that you're not uh, held hostage by whichever direction the market's going. If you think it's, it's gone too high, you can take advantage of it. And obviously, when it's uh, giving you great valuations, you take advantage of it. So I've always liked that feature you know, of what you're doing. Maybe just to finish very quickly, just reiterate the three uh, picks that you've just uh, alluded to here. Uh, I'll go in reverse order. I mean, uh, Nautilus. Uh, yeah. At home fitness group, it's basically Peloton at a fraction of the price, and, and uh, the the Protec uh, Home Medical, it's called uh, Protec Home Medical. It's PTQ mm-hmm. it's on the um, on the Canadian Venture Exchange. Uh, very much like that stock. Uh, going on Nasdaq, so uh, you're not going to have to wait long. Um, and then I think the, just the U.S. cannabis uh, index. I made a bunch of recommendations last year. All, yes. all the top. Of, if 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 your viewers uh, still own those stocks, do not sell them. <laughs> we like them all. But instead of giving you five names, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one, which is the uh, ETF in the U.S. MSOS uh, is the symbol, and uh, and it just covers the U.S. cannabis industry. And as you say, uh, Mike, you, you know, shorting stocks. Well, you don't want to be shorting. Uh, as an individual, but in our fund, we we get to hedge out a lot of the stuff, and we're uh, we're still not that excited about the Canadian cannabis industry at all, and we think new U.S. legislation is not good for yes uh, the Canadian mm-hmm. names. So uh, so stay away from the Canadian names, only U.S. names. Uh, what else can I tell you? You can always invest in our fund. Oh, the one thing I wanted yeah. to say is we are uh, launching a, our uh, our fund is going to be our our R S P eligible. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. This year, this year. So, well, I mean, I mean, I'll say it. Like, what you're hiring is professional management. You hire the track record. You try, you know, in this case, you know, it, it fits uh, very well in anybody's growth portfolio. You know, you say this is the growth section of my uh, portfolio, and uh, and I think in today's world, what's very difficult, and you know, I'm coming back from a long background of being an individual investor, but over the last few years, uh, exactly like instead of doing all the research into the U.S. marijuana sector, for example, I'll just let you do that, thanks. You know, and that's, that's what you're hiring uh, with the fund, and you look at the track record, and yours has been great. So, I, I mean, I'll, I'm all in. Paul, thank you so much, as usual. Uh, really appreciate you sharing your insight, and great to see you. Great to see you, Michael, and uh, thanks for doing this. Virtually, I, I look forward to, uh, yeah. to, uh, to listening to all the, all the other guys. I, uh, I do want to throw in a little, uh, one of our biggest uh, picks 
the successful fix last year was Touchstone Energy, which one of your uh, one of your speakers uh, suggested, and we made a ton of money on this. So I uh, I will be tuning in, uh, listening to all of the speakers, and uh, looking for good ideas, and uh, and have a great conference. Uh, well done. Appreciate it. We'll be back. At, well, just stay with me. I got, I got Ozzy Jurek on deck, so lots coming your way. Of course, we still have Peter Granich, Martin Armstrong. I'm going to get our small cap portfolio, all of that stuff. So, uh, man, it's already been a great day. I'm taking my notes, and we'll be right back. <laughs>